Hey everybody, welcome back to the Magic Channel Card Tricks and today we are going to learn the Lazy Man's Card Trick. The Lazy Man's Card Trick is a perfect trick for beginners because it's self-working, all the magic happens in the spectator's hands, and it uses a pre-arranged deck of cards. Now, what does that mean? Well, sometimes when a trick is self-working, it means we have done some early setup. We've pre-arranged the playing cards in such a way that the deck works for us. Of course, that makes the trick easy, but it also puts the burden of proof on us that the cards were shuffled, all right? And uh, I'll teach you a false shuffle, and I'll teach you the setup, and I promise you, when you learn this trick, you'll have a lot of fun with it. So first, the setup, okay? The setup is we have ace through 10 on the bottom of the deck in order of all the same suit. So I have ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10. You may want to make sure that it's a suit you're going to remember. Okay? So this is how you come out and you're going to do your false shuffle. And the way I do a false shuffle is I do it in overhand and start to do a uh, Hindu shuffle. Okay? Which just means you're stripping off the cards off the top and laying them down. Notice you're not disturbing the bottom of the deck. Right? You only have to do enough to where it feels like that was a good shuffle. I'm going to lay the bottom back down and then put this on top. That did nothing, right? You could do that, casually talk, pick the deck back up again. You can strip out cards again, right? Again, you're not disturbing the bottom at all. Lay it down, put it back on top, talk, right? And say, okay, here's the trick. What you're gonna do is you're gonna fan the cards for the spectator, let them pick any card. You can go as deep as you want. They're probably never gonna get into the bottom 10, okay? And you just, and if you do that, you stop them and go back and say, hey, let's try that again. You know, if they, if they hesitate, start giving them cards and let them pick any free selected card. Okay. Then you're going to place the deck down in front of them, in front of them. They've looked at their card, their card is the 10 of hearts, but you don't know that. In fact, you will never know their card. You will never know their card. Instruct them to place the card on top and then instruct them to cut and complete the cut. Now, what you did was you just put your stack of 10 on top of their card, right? And at this point, you can go crazy. Have them cut and complete the cut as many times as you want. In fact, it's even funnier if you're doing something else during this time with another spectator. And as you come back to them, ask them, did you cut the, did you cut the cards? Go ahead and cut it again. The beauty of a cyclical cut is that it doesn't change the order of the cards, right? It doesn't matter. They can do as many cuts as they'd like. Then, after that, have them roll the deck over and do a series of cuts face up. And here what you're doing is you, as the magician, are going to start watching for those spades, 10 through ace, okay? They cut, say, go ahead and do it again. They do it. I still haven't hit a spade, right? Cut. Do it again, cut, do it again. Now look at that, I hit an eight. At this point you could stop or you could keep going. If you didn't want to call attention to that eight, you said, ah, oh, that was, you feel like that's too, too, too obvious, cut it again, have them cut it again. And stress that these cuts are theirs, right? Now you have a four. Don't mention the four, don't call attention to it, say, have them roll the deck back over again one more time and then say, uh, so were you paying attention? Did you, did you count how many times you cut the deck? And they'll say, no. You say, oh, okay. Uh, well, I was paying attention and I know exactly where your card is. And they're going to be like, that's, that's shocking. There's no way you could know. He said, there, it is, it's the fourth card down in the deck. It's number four from the top. And you can pick the deck up yourself and count one, two, three, four, and that will be their card every single time. Because of the four on the bottom, it told you that it was the fourth card down. Okay? Because those other cards are the ace, two, and three. And really, at this point, you would only need to reverse the cards and put them right back on the bottom, and you are set to go again for the next spectator. Your reset is just that fast. Could you do this card trick as in any card at any number? You could. Um, in this case, you would fan the cards, have them select a card. Let's say it's the nine of clubs. 
right? They're going to cut the cards several times and cut the cards face up. And uh, if you were doing this trick for a gentleman, you might even ask him, what's your favorite suit? And he might say, the spades, because for men, spades tends to be the suit that they favor the most, okay? So you'd say, okay, I want you to keep cutting until you find a spade, okay? I'm finding the same cards over and over again. <laughs> so let's say he finds a spade, right? And you say, ah, seven. We'll use that number. So this is uh, where it sounds like they picked the suit and they picked the number. So now it becomes an any card at any number because they called out spades. What happens if they don't call out spades? It doesn't matter. If they say, oh really? Just say mine's diamonds, all right? And, just, and the conversation just continues. Turn it over and then you're gonna count down any card at any number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's their card. If you were doing this trick for uh, a lady, I would make your uh, group of 10 cards hearts, right? Make these all the hearts, do the trick for her, ask her, what's your favorite suit? If she says hearts, then say, great, keep cutting until you find a heart, right? So that's uh, a way you could do this for people more than once, right? Because you change the suit. Don't always use the same suit. Just put a different suit down there and it'll always look different. The trick will always go the same. So don't forget, you wanna do some sort of false shuffle that retains the bottom stock, right? You wanna fan the cards toward the spectator, let them select any card they want, and once they do that, you place the deck face down in front of them. Tell them to put their card on top, and then cut the deck and complete it. At that point, you can cut it as many times as you want. Even if they hit their four suit when it's face up, you can even have them pass it and keep going. Let's say the number's too high. You're like, I don't want to count 10 cards down. That's fine. That's the beauty of the cycle, though, is that it's never going to be, um, it's never going to be higher than 10, right? So it's, it's, it's uh, an easy trick to do, unless you keep counting like this <laughs> and you don't get any Spades. Where are the spades? They're on the top. There you go. So yeah, once you see your force suit, then you remember you want to count down to the number. So if it's seven, right, you're counting down one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh card, the seventh card. It's not seven, then their card. It's actually the seventh card. So whatever is on the bottom, you just say it's the seventh card. And again, to reset, you just count these in reverse and stack it on top and you're good to go and that is the lazy man's card trick thanks for watching guys thanks for hanging out as always uh, this channel is where you can find easy uh, self-working card tricks and other magic tricks that you can find using objects lying around the house make sure you remember to like subscribe and follow and i'll see you guys next week bye hey have you ever purchased a magic trick that they said was easy or for beginners and when you opened it up, it was just a bunch of parts and some typed out instructions. Like, how are you supposed to figure out how to do a trick with instructions that are this small and there's just no detail, right? No video, no pictures. You're so disappointed. You wanted to learn how to do this trick. You thought it'd be fun. And then when you got it in the mail, you were sorely disappointed. I want to help you. This channel wants to help you. I have a whole playlist of instructional videos that'll walk you through my personal handling on these tricks plus many more. Now, obviously, you need to own the tricks, right? You need to own the tricks in order to perform them. You won't be able to do any of these tricks unless you actually own them. But another great way to use this channel is as a way to look at tricks that are available on the market and to decide whether those tricks are gonna work for you. I purchase all of my tricks from penguinmagic.com. And so if you'd like access to that playlist, if you would like to see kind of behind the scenes and get my personal handling for these tricks plus many more, you can hit the join button down below and subscribe to this channel for only 99 cents a month. And as long as you're a subscriber, you'll have access to those videos plus any new ones I continue to make. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next week.